genetic engineering is really a radical revolution in food production. It's really a cell invasion technology. You know, people have heard they're taking a flounder gene and putting it in tomato so the tomato can last in, in cold temperatures. But people ask, how does that flounder gene get in that tomato? How does it get in there? And what really happens is the only way you can do it is to invade the cell of the tomato and deposit the flounder gene. Well, what's good at invading cells? Bacteria and viruses. In order to move genetic material from one organism to another that don't normally cross, you've got to sort of behave like bacteria and viruses and invade into the cells and become established just like a virus must become established. There was a very good reason why for you know, virtually 200 years, uh, the Patent Office and Congress did not allow for the patenting of life. You know, clearly when you patent a tennis racket, let's say, with a new sweet spot, you can describe that very accurately to the Patent Office. But how in the world can you describe a whole plant, much less generations down when that's changed and mutated? But in 1978, Dr. Ananda Chakrabarty took the first living organism to the Patent Office. Chakrabarty was an engineer for General Electric, and he uh, created an oil-eating microbe and tried to get it patented. And the U.S. Patent Office said, no way, we do not allow you to patent parts of nature. You know, if you have a tennis racket or a toaster, you can patent that, but you can't patent a part of nature. Uh, but General Electric and, and Chakrabarty were very insistent. They took it all the way to the Supreme Court. And at one vote majority decision, they said, you can patent this genetically engineered microbe. The floodgates were now open for genetic engineering. During the Reagan administration, they said, let's patent animals. And then human genes and human body parts. I think what the companies would like to say is, we are patenting the gene. And wherever that gene goes, we own anything that we put it in. If it goes into a plant, we own the plant. If it goes into an animal, we own the animal. They might even say around the world, if it goes into a human being, we own that human being. There would be some constitutional problems with that in the United States. But they clearly would want their patent to follow the gene. The issue of patenting life has never been voted on by the people or the Congress of the United States. It actually means giving corporations incredibly the power to own, control the species of the Earth. A demon had made a man-made monster, and now the monster was the master.